All right, so, so far we have learned how to query, how to retrieve our data from the database without changing anything, without changing the content of the tables or changing the columns. So we have used the command select in order to retrieve our data. And with that, those commands will not change our data inside our database. So as the next, we're gonna learn how to manipulate our data inside our database in order to change the content. And for that, we have a new set of commands inside a new SQL category that is called DML, Data Manipulation Language. And inside it, we have three main commands. We have the insert, we could use it if we want to insert new data inside our tables. We have delete. If we have some existing rows and we want to delete it from the database, we could use the delete command. And the last one, we have update. If you want to update or to change the content of existing rows in our tables, we could go and use the update command. All right, so now we're gonna start with the first command. We have the insert command. We're gonna learn now how to insert new rows to our database. So we're gonna focus on the table customers. As you know, in our tutorial database, we have five customers. And now we're gonna practice by adding one more new customer to our database to learn how to work with the insert command. So before now we are inserting any new stuff to our database, we really have to understand the structure of the table, the structure of the columns, because if we don't know the structure and the definition of those stuff, we will be having some errors while we are inserting the data. So just knowing that we have like five columns inside the table customers, that is not enough. So we really need to understand the definitions of the tables before we start inserting any new data to our table customers. And to do that, I usually use the following keyword. So describe customers, the table name. So what I'm saying now to the SQL, give me the definition of the table customers so I can have a look, what do we have for each column? At the first look, it might look a little bit complicated. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna explain all those stuff step by step. So we are saying, okay, database, explain for me or describe for me the table customers. As you know that each tables contain multiple columns, so we can see in the results, we have here five columns. We have customer ID, first name, last name, country, and score, and those are the column names. And for each column, we have over here descriptions or properties that describing each column. So we have here the data types. For example, if you check here now our table customers, we have in the customer ID only numbers and they are unique. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and those are numbers. So the data type for the customer ID is like something like numbers. And in database, we call them integers or int. And the first name, it's like we don't have only numbers, we have characters. So we have Maria, John, and they are like text. And we call them in the database varchar. There is different types for so, such a characters. For example, we have character or char and so on. But in the best practices, we use varchar because they optimize the spaces or the sizes in our database. So as well, we can see here, there is like the size of the varchar. We have here 50, that means the maximum allowed size for the first name is only 50. So if you're having like more than 50 characters in the first name, the database will cut it and insert only 50 characters for the first name. So here we are like putting some rules for each columns. So the first name should maximum be 50 characters, the same for the last name and the country. So if you have really long name that is more than 50 characters, it will not fit this column and the database gonna cut it. So you could apply as well at the data type over here, some rules about the size of each column. And we have as well the score, as you can see in the scores, we don't have any characters. They are only like numbers, we call them integer. So with that, you can see, okay, each column has a different data type and you have more like understanding of that description of the columns. After that, there is the field called nulls. And you can see here only no and yes. It says, 
are the nulls are allowed in each column or not so for example in the customer id we are not allowing any nulls so here the database if you insert any null the database will say no it's not allowed so in the definitions there is no null allowed and the same goes for the first name and the last name so once we insert data to the customers we always have to have customer id first name and last name but now with the score and the country Entry, we said yes so the nulls are allowed for example as you can see in the score we have here one null and in the country if you don't specify anything in the insert statements there will be no problem and the database gonna see gonna show us a null so here we can see the definition where we can add nulls and where it is not allowed so we have over here as well a key for each tables in SQL databases, we have primary keys. It is the keys that defines each customer or each row. For example, in our table over here, customers, we have the customer ID as a primary key. And once we say primary key, here comes two stuff. First, it is not allowed to be null. And second, it should be unique. That means it is not allowed to have two customers with the same ID. So Maria and John should always have different customer ID. We cannot have both of them, for example, the customer ID one. So here should not exist any duplicates, and this is unique. So this is the most important thing to understand about the primary key, that they are unique. So if I go now and insert, one more new customer and say okay we have a new customer called Anne and she has the customer id 5 but since in the database we have already the customer id 5 the database is going to give you an error so here it's very important to understand in the structure which column over here is our primary key and then we have some other uh, informations for example we have here extras it says it is an auto increment auto increments means like if i add a new customer the database is gonna increment the customer id automatically for example if i add in one more new customer i don't have to specify like uh, the customer id should be number six the database is gonna do it automatically so here we have added some extra informations that it tell us this ID will be generated from the database and we don't have to specify it. So now we have more insights about the table customers. We know the definition of each column and we could start now inserting new records or new rows to the table customers. So I'm gonna open new tab and we're gonna start using the insert. So I'm gonna type here insert into keyword and then we have to specify the table name where we're going to insert our data in the table customers then we have now to specify the values for each column so values open brackets and now we're going to start one by one so the customer id i want to check that again the customer id is integer it is the primary key and auto increment that means the database is gonna like increment the new id i don't have to do it myself so i could go and say default Defaults means the database is going to take care of that and going to insert the customer id 6 you could go and say okay instead of that i'm gonna type number six but i really don't recommend it because if you have like big database and someone else is doing insert or you forget about what is the last customer id we have in the database so just make your life easier and type default so now we have to enter the first name i'm gonna use for example the first name anna here we have problem in sql database that you cannot just type the first name like this it is a string and in string we have to put it always inside single quotes or double quotes so for example i'm gonna use the double quotes in order to like to deal with the strings if you don't do that you will get an error i usually use one quotes to insert the strings so with that it should be okay the last name is the same thing as this var character and we have to put a name on it so i'm gonna use nixon as last name so we have now the three columns 
customer id first name last name now we have country and score so let's check the country the country it says it is var character so we have to specify something over here and we could leave it empty so i don't have here really to insert anything if i don't want and the same goes for the score it is but integer but we could leave it as well empty so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna add the country so the country it is var character so it is string i need to put it in single quotes i'm gonna use the country uk okay so now to the last column we have the score so let's check that in the description so we have score it is integer so that means only numbers should be inside the score it is nullable so i could leave it empty and it is not primary key and so on so that means i could leave it as a null and that makes sense because anna is a new customer and she doesn't have yet any like scores in our database or system so that's why i could just write over here a null or i could leave it like a zero if i want so with that i will just leave it as a null and let's just execute another query and see whether we have everything right so he will not get any like result set we will just get here the information that everything is green and we have inserted the data so in order to check now this user inside our database we're gonna open new tab select star from customers and see whether anna is in the database and yes we have no one more customer called Anna Nixon from country UK. The score is null. She's new. And we have the new generated ID, customer ID from the database. Okay, so now let's keep practicing and add one more customer, our customer number seven in our database. So let's go and do that. So I'm going to move everything and start from the scratch. Insert into our table customers and now we're gonna add the values so as usual our first value the customer id is gonna be default the first name i'm gonna use max and the last name i'm gonna use lang but now the country and score i could leave them empty so i'm gonna use the null and as well for the score null so now as you might already notice what i have really done over here i just gave a first name and last name and for all others i'm using some nulls and defaults so we could like skip that and make our life easier with just adding the first name and the last name so if i just remove the null over here and the default and run the query I will get an error because the database is not understanding what is max is max like the country is max the first name the last name the lang as well is it like the first name last name so we need to specify for the database what are those values to which column so in order to do that i'm gonna open here new brackets and say okay i'm gonna type the column name first name and the second one we are using the last name so with that we are telling the database okay the first values belongs to the column first name and the second value belongs to the column last name and if i run this we will not get an error because we have already done the mapping and everything else is done automatically so that means the database knows the customer id it is like automatically generated so it's going to generate a new id and since the database didn't find any informations about the country and the score it's going to put it as a default as a null so let's check now the result if i query now the same select star from customers and we can see the database done that and inserted our new customer max lang she understood that the country or it understood that the country is a null and score is a null and generated the id of seven so as you can see it's more compact and i don't have to add all those nulls because imagine if you have a big table with like 50 columns and you have a lot of nulls the query gonna look really bad so here i'm just inserting 
what I need and the rest is gonna do the database for me if it is allowed. So for example, if the country should not be null, I have to insert here something about the country. But since we are allowing the nulls in the country and the score, we could just ignore it and leave it like this. All right, so with that, we have learned how to insert data in our SQL tables. Next, we're gonna talk about the update statements. And in the video description, you will find a link to free SQL materials like the database and the data of this tutorial, the SQL sheet sheet, and as well, all the presentations. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.